organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming your way on Daily Iowan TV, Iowa may be making changes in state government. Find out more next. And later, the cold weather could be creating problems for students on the go. We have your updates from the kickoff of the Cyhawks series last night and how men's basketball and wrestling are preparing to take on their in-state rivals. We have all the latest local and national headlines just ahead. Stay tuned. You're watching Daily Iowan TV. Good morning and thanks for watching another early morning edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Keaton Fuller. After meeting with President-elect Donald Trump just days ago, Governor Terry Branstad has accepted his nomination to be our nation's ambassador to China. Trump made the announcement on Wednesday evening at a fundraising event in New York. Branstad has had a long and personal relationship with the Chinese president. Branstad must still be confirmed by the U.S. Senate, which could take a matter of time. If he resigns as governor to fulfill his ambassador position, Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds will become Iowa's first female governor. Trump and Branstad will be in Des Moines today for a rally. The national It's On Us campaign that aims to stop sexual assault has made its mark on the University of Iowa. University of Iowa student government released its very own It's On Us campaign video that's gaining popularity One online. Women. UISG has been working hard on getting more awareness for sexual assault college. here at the UI. And the latest video has improved the process. The national campaign that began using celebrities has influenced colleges across the country in the fight to end sexual assault. This afternoon, international students and community members from South Korea gathered at the Pentecrest to protest the actions of their country's President Park Gun Hae. Gun Hae is amidst a scandal relating to releasing confidential information to a personal friend and misuse of power. South Koreans feel their democracy has been violated and are demanding Gun Hae resigns from her position. More than 6,000 miles away from, the home, from home, the group wanted their voices to be heard. The University of Iowa Stead Family Children's Hospital's grand opening has been delayed. Daily Iowan TV reporter Ryan Scott spoke with UI officials to find out how this affects the community. University of Iowa Stead Family Children's Hospital was originally planned to open December 10th, but as you can see, construction is still underway. Last week we met with uh, the leadership of University of Iowa Healthcare and also with uh, the contractors, and they told us that the they were not going to be able to hit all the construction milestones to keep the project on track. According to UI Healthcare officials, the delay will not affect patients or new hospital staff that will soon be occupying the building. Patients and families will still be receiving care in the current facility and also the new staff we hire, they're already been on board, they've been receiving training and orientation, so we'll just now have more time to accomplish that task as well. Work still remains on several inpatient floors. Officials believe one potential cause for delays is the high demand for construction workers in Johnson County. The demand for skilled labor has been very intense and so sometimes this has been a situation where we just have not been able to get the skilled you know, workers we need in at the right time. UI healthcare officials are excited to be a part of the first building opening in 2017. So many folks are very excited about this facility. Uh, no one's more eager than we are. Hospital staff at the moment do not have a set date in mind for when the new children's hospital will open. However, they are optimistic that it will be completed by late January to early February. Reporting from the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Ryan Scott, Daily Iowa TV. Well, the winter weather is definitely here in full force, and I, for one, have not been a huge fan of the biting cold all week. To find out if we can expect more of that, we've got Noah Gowdy standing by in the weather studio. Noah? Well, Keaton, that biting cold weather out there is really going to be here to stay for the rest of the season. So now let's get to today's forecast. This morning, we are seeing temperatures around 16 degrees currently, but with the wind blowing out of the northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour, the wind chill in Iowa City is currently sitting at zero degrees. This afternoon, we will see temperatures around 21 degrees with partly cloudy skies. 
This evening, those temperatures are going to stay about the same at 20 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow morning, we are expecting temperatures around 18 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Now let's take a look at our six-day extended forecast. The winter sure does, look, sure does seem like it is here to stay with temperatures around 22 degrees on Friday with, a, with mostly cloudy skies. Saturday, we are looking at a 60% chance of snow showers throughout the day with only about an inch of snow expected and a high of 26 degrees. Sunday, we are seeing more snow showers heading our way with a 60% chance throughout the day. And, if, and our forecast is showing three to five inches of snow that day with a high of 28 degrees. Moving into next week, Monday, we are expecting a high in the upper teens with partly cloudy skies. Tuesday has another chance of snow showers and a high of only 10 degrees. Wednesday does look like it will be, here, be our coldest day with a high only reaching the single digits. That is our weather forecast for you today. Back to Keaton at the desk. Thanks, Noah. As the weather is getting colder, cars are facing the consequences. Reporter Alexis Tanzi found out how students can prevent vehicle problems caused by the cold weather. Vehicle repair shops have been busy with more business than usual as the weather is finally cooling down. Cold weather often causes cars to have low tire pressure, but there may be more problems caused by the weather change that aren't as obvious. Tuffy Auto Service Center does free maintenance checks so everyone has the opportunity to prevent future breakdowns. The best way to prevent unwanted breakdowns is, you know, bring your vehicle in. We do offer free winter inspection, so we'll check out anybody's car that comes in, you know, make sure their tires are good, their belts are good, you know, batteries for starting, and like I said, the coolant is important. It may have only snowed once so far this season, but students are starting to worry about driving in snowy and icy conditions. I'm worried about my car slipping in the snow because I've heard that my car particularly doesn't do well in ice and snow conditions, so I don't want to be slipping around Iowa City. As long as students are proactive about getting their cars checked, they should have nothing to worry about regarding their vehicles this winter. Winter may not be the best conditions for students to have a car up at school, but like Danny Muse said, all breakdowns can be prevented with maintenance. This is Alexis Tanzi, Daily Iowan TV. In a recent study of website accessibility on college campuses, the University of Iowa ranked first among 140 other colleges and universities. This is a major improvement from the same study done in 2009 that ranked Iowa near the bottom of the list. The study assesses how accessible a website is to people with vision and hearing impairments, as well as students who have speech and learning disabilities. Key factors of accessible websites include text alternatives for images and simpler web page designs. Kirk and his team are continuing to improve website accessibility, saying there are always new techniques and processes coming to light. You know, when from one ranking, ranking to the next, the Department of Veteran Affairs gave ratings us. out to Iowa City and Des Moines VA hospitals. A three out of five star rating was awarded to the Iowa City VA. The rating used to be confidential, but were released yesterday. The Des Moines system scored a slightly lower rating than Iowa City with a, a patient satisfaction. In return, Des Moines scored higher than Iowa City in wait times for appointments. The ratings showing an average range for VA hospitals. Well, with Iowa and Iowa State Week underway, it's always an exciting week in my family with a sibling who's a cyclone and me being a hawk. For more, we've got Taylor Van Fleet standing by in the sports studio. Taylor? That's right, Keaton, and we could not ask for a more exciting week of sports to close out the semester, that's for sure. Well, the Cy Hawk series started last night with women's basketball. Tonight we have men's basketball. Swimming, diving, swimming and diving is on Friday, and the week will end with wrestling on Saturday. The women's basketball team played against Iowa State last night and started off the Cy Hawks series with a win for the Hawkeyes. Colin Murphy was at Carver Hawkeye Arena with the coverage. The Iowa women's basketball team hosted the first part of the Cy Hawks series this week, welcoming an Iowa State into Carver Hawkeye Arena Wednesday night. The Hawkeyes offense started off slow, but did not take long to get into a groove. Iowa State jumped out to an early lead in the first quarter of Wednesday night's matchup, but as shots started to fall for the Hawkeyes, there was no looking back. The Hawks took charge in the second quarter and extended their lead as Iowa State fell cold. Led by Tanaya Davis, the Hawks took a 15-point lead into halftime. 
it's confidence, but at the same time, I think um, the surgery helped me out a lot just by not having my left hand, my guide hand, just shooting form shots, you know, while I was down and out. I think that definitely helped me. The Hawks continued to trend upward in the second half as they held their double-digit lead over the Cyclones. Iowa State inched its way back in the game, but every time Iowa needed a big basket, it was one of their five players scoring in double digits that got the job done. Despite being outscored in the fourth quarter, the Hawks beat the Cyclones 88-76 to to go to 7-3 on the season. We kept our composure the whole game, you know, we get up big, they make a little run at us. Uh, for the most part, you know, we really kept our composure, but I thought, you know, we we're just the better team. I and mean, we have five people in double figures. Uh, we have two women out here that had career highs today in Tanaya and Kathleen. It was sweet victory for the Hawkeyes, winning in such dominating fashion after they fell to the Cyclones in last season's matchup. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Colin Murphy, Daily Iowan, TV Sports. The women's win is their second in the last four seasons of the Cyhawk series and first since 2014. The men's team will welcome the Cyclones to Carver tonight for a 7 p.m. tip-off. And if you remember last season, Iowa buried Iowa State on their home court by 20 points in the first half. But, but State came back from the deficit and won on a last second shot. The number 25 team this season brings experience to the court with five seniors in their starting lineup. Monte Morris leads the team averaging 14.8 points per game, followed by Deontay Burton with 14.1, Nas Mitrulong at 12.8, and Matt Thomas at 11.3. Iowa State's last game was against Omaha, defeating them 91 to 47. And this is the same team Iowa lost to last Saturday, 98 to 89. The Hawkeyes are coming off a dominant win, beating Stetson 95 to 68 on Monday. But the younger guys know how big tonight's game is against the Cyclones. And their leader, Peter Jock, is doing whatever it takes to prepare these guys for the biggest stage they faced all season. I've grown up around Iowa basketball, so I know how big of a game this is. But um, I don't want to let it get to me too much right now. All on TV, so this is my first time experiencing it. So um, it might be a little over overwhelming when I first take the floor, but I know those nerves are good over when the balls jumped up. I got really close friends uh, that play for Iowa State, Monte and Naz, and uh, Matt Thomas, and then we talk trash a lot, and uh, especially with me and Monte. And um, you know, it's, I'm gonna do everything I can to win, and uh, my teammates got my back. And we gonna, it's a big rivalry game, so we we definitely gonna be ready for that. Mary-Kate Harrion and Katie Sextro are on the coverage tonight, so tune in for tomorrow's show for the ins and outs of the second Cyhawk showdown of the winter season. And as we mentioned earlier, Iowa Wrestling will take on Iowa State on Saturday night at 7 p.m. as well. Iowa State is currently 1-3 overall, while Iowa is 4-0 on the season. And although Tom Brand is 11-0 against the Cyclones, he is still preparing his team for a fight. We know what's at stake um, week to week, you know, you, you get ready for who's in front of you, but, you know, we, we like competition. Let's give them no hope and let's keep the score wide, lopsided to one side. It's exciting, you know, it's, it's easier to get up for Iowa State against a tough opponent, and I mean, you get up anyway, but I think this is a little extra edge. We will have updates from the duel on Monday's show. Tuning to other Hawkeye news, it's been quite the year for field hockey player Natalie Caffone. The National Field Hockey Coaches Association announced Wednesday that the redshirt senior was named Longstreth NFHCA Division I First Team All-American. Caffone becomes the fourth athlete in Iowa field hockey history to earn All-American honors three times, the 89th All-American in program history, and is the ninth athlete to earn two or more first-team All-American accolades. Don't forget our men's basketball coverage from tonight's game will be on the show tomorrow, along with a preview of the new indoor track and field facility. Keaton, back to you. Thank you, Taylor. That's your news for this Thursday morning. Be sure to tune in every morning at 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. Also, make sure to grab your copy of today's Daily Iowan paper. For Daily Iowan TV, I'm Keaton Fuller. Thank you for watching.